This is a 69-year-old gentleman had history of open cholecystectomy and a newly diagnosed metastatic gastric cancer with abdominal ultrasound confirmed presence of ascites. OGD done which shows a 4CM ulcerative growth at the antrum. Biopsy confirmed adenocarcinoma. There's another 3CM pedunculated polypoid lesion at inferior wall of mid-body as well. He undergoes staging PET CT, which again shows a gastric entral mass with multiple peritoneal and also liver metastases. There's also dilated bilateral intrahepatic ducts and common bowel duct due to extrinsic compression by the adjacent multiple lymphadenopathy. His liver function also deranged with bilirubin up to 200. Today we'll perform ERCP plus or minus endoscopic ultrasound for anti grade stenting. Hello, uh, we have uh, Dr. D here, and uh, I'm Shannon uh, with uh, Prince of Wales. Uh, so uh, the patient actually developed uh, some coffee ground vomiting last night. So uh, we did an OGD before the EUS, and uh, it shows that uh, apart from the antral tumor, uh, there are some infiltration into the duodenum. Uh, so after discussion, uh, we decided not to proceed uh, with ERCP and probably go directly to EUS. So uh, are you getting the picture? Yes, yes, very nice. EUS picture? Yes. So you can see here, we have nicely dilated intrahepatic biliary radicals. Let's put a Doppler here. So there is some vessels which we like to avoid when we are puncturing. So this is the segment 3 here. And there are nice radicals all around. So we have to choose a safe radical here. So here you see, um, this is an interesting patient because you have a tumor in the stomach, you have a tumor in the duodenum, both of them are adenocarcinomas and um, there is no way you can do an ERCP because the entire um, second part of duodenum appears infiltrated. We were also thinking of placing an enteral stent but uh, the gastroscope passed relatively easily so we have decided not to go for that now, and we will try to uh, If you can see the fluoro picture, can you show me the fluoro picture? So this is the scope position for a hepaticogastrostomy. You can see the scope is looking a little up, and this is the segment 3 here. See this? So one thing you have to see is you should try to look towards the hilum if possible. If it is away then your wire will go in the other direction so always check usually when you have a straightforward axis it is easy to pass a guide wire across so these are nice radicals juicy radicals I think we should be able to do it easily so I'm using a 19 gauge needle now Shannon is there helping me Shazad is there helping me and of course uh, we have a good team of excellent assistants here with us. So, Dr. Deer, um, will you proceed with an anti-grade stenting or an HGS? So, uh, uh, the practice that we follow at our center is always try to uh, do an anti-grade first. I don't know. There's no data to suggest, but we somehow are, I think, because of our ERCP background, we believe in transpapillary stenting. So um, we try for an anti-grade. If it doesn't go, then we go for an HGS. So transluminal procedures are only reserved for failed anti-grade or failed rendezvous procedures. So you can see my needle there on the way. Show me fluoro once again, please. This looks good. So this is the needle. We will try to puncture here. I think I'm in. Let's aspirate and see if there is bile. Yeah, can you see the bile? Yes. yes we can. So we are in the biliary system. We will inject a bit and see what is the situation.
So you can see that there is a sub hyalur uh, narrowing there. Can we separate the spine, please? Yeah, 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 like that, like that. Now you see there is a subhyalur stenosis. Um, we are passing a glide wire. So it's our favorite uh, wire because it moves very, very well. So what uh, guide wire are you using? This is a 032 glide wire, Terumo. So it is completely coated all through needs lot of hydration so you have to make it wet all the time so is the tip a straight tip or a curved it's tip an, wire it's a curved tip wire uh -huh. that's that's huge important because that helps us manipulate nicely can we release the so you can see the wire is going down towards the hilum now can we reduce the kv reduce the kv of the x-ray please so that we can see it well kv Is it fixed? Okay, okay. So uh, now here you need manipulation of the wire. So see what Shezad is doing is trying to juggle it uh, right and left, trying to go beyond the narrowing. It's a tight subhyalur narrowing. So I hope we are able to go through it. So you have the pass the tumor, oh, and good. then you have to pass the. Can we see down, please? So you can see we are in the duodenum now. Yes. Can you see the wire in the duodenum? Congratulations. So we pass, now we withdraw the needle. We'll withdraw the needle carefully. Yeah. So now you should see, uh, we use a 260 centimeter wire, which gets over very soon. So after this, Shahzad will use saline flushing. Uh, that helps me also because we can exchange it pretty fast. Shall I? So you can see I'm doing it very fast here. And the wire comes out. We use a cystotome now. This is six French cystotome? This is a six French cystotome, yes. Okay. So now that is the wire. See there? Yellow, no? Okay. So we are in the system now, in the biliary system. We are passing the cystotome. We'll pass it all the way, if possible, beyond the stricture into the duodenum. So we are passing it across the stenosis now. Seems to be going OK. Now I think we are in the duodenum. OK. I think we are in the duodenum now. Yeah. Now let's inject and confirm that we are in the duodenum. So you can see the duodenal um, is uh, nicely opacified. Can you see the duodenum? We injected yes. contrast. Yes. yes, we see very good. We are in the duodenum. Now the next step is passing a stiff wire. So which wire are we using now? We are using the dream wire, 035 dream wire. So this will be a stiff wire so that the passage of stent is, is straightforward. So the dream wire is through. 
I am withdrawing the sister tome now. It's okay. You're comfortable. Six lena, Tika. The other critical point uh, while deploying the stent is to see to define where the papillary opening is supposed to be, so that you are placing it all right. So that uh, requires some contrast injection while we are deploying the stent. So we will try and see that. So we are using the usual ERCP stent, 6 centimeter uncovered wall stent. So that is another advantage we have because you don't need to use the, you know, the fancy stents as I call them. Uh, usual stents are useful, uh, transpapillary approach. So this stent is very, very easy to deploy and we don't need to and this is not as expensive as the other stents that are you know coming in the market they are good they are excellent but they are not available to us in india so i think i am in the duodenum now let us see if we are in the duodenum so now we are in the duodenum now you inject yeah. again contrast. Now I am injecting contrast. You can see that we are in the duodenum. So this this has to be little little careful. We have to be careful. Although in this case, probably, even if we are little more into the duodenum, it is okay. Shall I push a little more? Now there is some resistance. Yeah, I think this is fin this is okay. Let's open and see if it's opening well. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Stop. So you see the stent has opened well. I'll withdraw it a little, little. Yeah. We are deploying it now. Okay. So the stent is deployed, you can see there. We will now see whether we are right in position. Here. Yeah. And we inject some contrast to see whether it is all right. Okay. So you can see the contrast going into the duodenum. Okay. Now we withdraw carefully the assembly. Excellent procedure. And that completes the procedure. So Dr. Dia, you. Um, thank you, thank you. Not only you to you, also to your assistant because he found the way with the oh, wire. Oh, without, without him I yes. don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, Shannon, what are you asking? Um, how do you usually do with the entry site? Do you just can we just leave it, or do you put in pigtails? Uh, so yes, so uh, this is a very very good question. So uh, there are some uh, friends of mine in Japan who believe that we should also plug uh, the puncture site in the stomach uh, with a stent. Uh, I haven't seen any incidence of bile leak um, into the stomach because as soon as the stent deploys the bile drains into the duodenum preferentially. Yeah. Uh, so we don't usually follow it, but there is one thing which is um, good. If you place a stent through that, uh, so uh, place a plastic stent as an HGS from right. the stomach into the bile duct. That helps us um, have an entry point later on. Okay. So suppose this stent gets blocked. Okay. So we can, you know, again go in by the side of the plastic stent. 
So yes, there is a point to that, but uh, we don't uh, do it um, currently. Okay, thank yeah, you very yeah. much, Dr. J. Thank Excellent you, thank demonstration. You. Thank you. Thank